Are you ready to learn how to pin insects without an insect toolkit? In this video, you can learn how to pin insects with very basic tools. Let's get started. Thumbs up, emoji face, hearts. You can do that. So again, powdery substance on the wings. Just get a good grip. We're gonna put it in the thorax. Very slow, I just pinned it very slow. Notice I didn't go through, because I don't wanna poke my fingers. And here you can push it through on the board. You can also lay it here on the edge and push it through until you get a nice height. And again, this is assuming you don't have the insect leveler. There's lots of ways to do this creatively. Now, when it's in the box, I want the wings to be displayed flat here on top. So for the purpose of curing, we lay the insect this way, far enough from the edge so I could put the lid on this. And we're gonna go ahead and try and get those wings open. Now these wings, you saw what was happening with the body twisting on this guy, right? He twisted quite a bit when I tried to get him in position. So I anticipate this one giving me a hard time too. And that's okay. That's part of what makes this interesting and exciting. So this portion is open here already. Sometimes the insects are completely closed off in the back. Let me grab one to show. Here's an example of another. I think this is a Dobson fly. It's really closed off here in the back and I would have a hard time getting a needle in there. So just again, take your time. And I just get one and there's the twist. See it right away, jumping into place? Stubborn, oh, and he came off. So you can see I'm handling the wings, but I am being so delicate right now and so gentle. I'm not resisting. I'm just putting pressure. I'm sorry, I'm not resisting it. I'm just encouraging it into position. Let me get rid of this one. There we go. And it's lost, see that? It's so challenging sometimes, but that's okay, patience. And then we're gonna go ahead and move the wing, encourage it down a little, very gently without ripping it. There we go. And I'm gonna just push him. Can't push him any more down. So, now what? I'm not happy, I'm not happy because the wings are still bent back. See how they're not up and flat? This guys are a little bit more flat. So I'm gonna keep working it. And the way I'm gonna do that is take another pin and now encourage this one to go the distance even further. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side and encourage it to go the distance even further. And they wrinkle and they complain. I can't get it on that side because the legs are there. So how many attempts is that? It's taken like 30 seconds maybe. It's patience, it's adjusting. And then as we fiddle with it, the wings do stretch a little. There we go, I think we got it. Now we're gonna encourage this side a little more. There we go. Now, there's a little, I'm just encouraging that out. There you go. And he is gonna be slightly, the wing slightly bent down you still get a display. And this is again, if I don't have a insect spreader handy. And now let's see if we can do a beetle. So when the bugs are in the freezer, I put layers in between the napkin. I put the bugs in, add a napkin layer like this. Then I put in the next jar and another layer and another layer. So I picked a little beetle out. And now, can we pin the beetle? Absolutely. Here's our little beetle. I will have to look up what kind of, that's a carrion beetle or a carpet beetle, I'm not sure. I've gotta look it up. Um, you can't really see the dots and details on it. It's not 
um, that braid in here. There he is. There he goes. Sharpen him out again. So what's the point? Um, you'll notice that here he is flat. He has little legs that I'm grabbing him by. Did our camera get out of focus? It sure did. There he is. He has little legs there. See that? And he's flat. So we can put him on a tip because I don't want to crack him in half with a pin that might be too small. So again, I have um, cotton paper specifically made for tags, but I cut a bunch of little triangles. And this is strictly for the purpose of pinning one of these little creatures. So I have grab the paper, and I get my insect block, pop it through so it's the correct height. And now we're going to glue the insect onto the paper. And you might be wondering what kind of glue we use for this. Now this is very technical glue, it's very complicated. Um, there's a variety of brands you can get. I do not yet have a preference. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you rapid dry, cheap, clear nail polish. For this box, we've been using another inexpensive <laughs> base coat, top coat nail polish. Yes, this is how you get the insects to stick. When a leg comes off and I have to reattach it or a wing, we just use clear nail polish. Pop that one little very light drop, very light drop. Grab your insect and encourage him on the paper. Oops, this happens. I'm a lefty, so this way is a little easier for me. There we go. And so you want to pin, I think it's on the right. I may have to look it up. This way, now he's pinned. And he's gonna go to this little section to continue to cure and dry and heat. Um, nail polish takes a little longer to dry, but that's what these guys are looking like, and they're all pinned on those little tags. Again, 100% cotton paper because we don't want them to be ruined due to time. So this spider has been very challenging. I've had a hard time pinning him. Is he on there? Yeah, he is. So I can't remove him. But I am going to add a little bit more glue, and now... I have to get in this very narrow space, and if I put this big brush, which is way too big, so here's another little trick. I take the head of the pin and I run it along the nail polish. I get a drop, and now I can maneuver into here and put the drop exactly where I want it. This brush head, this brush head is way too big, whereas the little needle gets me exactly, that pin head exactly where I want to be. Now I can encourage this guy back up on the pin. If you can't hear that, that's me. <sighs> Blowing a little air so it sits tight. You don't want to blow the air. You don't want to take the time to make sure he stays. Just pop another little pin in here. Make sure he stays in place. Now he's not going anywhere. Let that cure, and after a minute or two, I'm going to, I like to spread the spider's legs out, but again, we just put the glue on, and I'm going to regret messing with him because he's going to fall right off, so we'll come back and spread his legs out. I think I said I have a surprise, and here is the surprise. So this was our black lighting last night. The other thing we've noticed is a lot of damselflies in the area, and so we're going to pin a damselfly where are they? 
Damselflies are similar to dragonflies. They are cute and small and harmless. And there are just thousands on the property that we're at. Now I'm not as familiar with damselflies. I don't have many. Oh my gosh, I just found something. So this is our, we were sweeping with the big net, sweeping through the tall prairie. And I just grabbed a bunch and I threw them in this jar. So we've got a spider and another spider, but look at this. I think this is an Ichneumon wasp. Oh, I've always wanted to see one of those. He's very small, curved here tail, which is very um, typical of them. Small in shape, I'm gonna pin him to, oh, I'm excited now. So we're gonna do two treats for you. So let's do a damselfly. Now a damselfly, again, is in, similar to the dragonfly family. Here's what they look like. Let's focus, there he is. Large eyes on top. Thorax is here. This is the thorax is here. And then the long abdomen. Cracked, probably injured or coming into the jar. So we're gonna just put a little drop of glue there to help encourage that up. And I'll show you how I do that repair later. Beautiful spotting on the wings. So I'm going to, again, I like to handle them very gently. And we're gonna get for this one, another example, I'm gonna use a double zero. I'm not gonna use a size two pin. Here's the difference. This is a size two and this is a double zero. If I put the size two in, I'm gonna spread that body part out too much and ruin it. So we're gonna go double zero on the right. Barely got, again, we're pretending you don't have the tool. So we're gonna just push it on down or use our tweezers. And there he is, pinned. Beautiful little specimen. So here's how I fix the tail. You see that tail? A little crooked, right? It's dropped down here on the bottom and I would prefer it be straight in the box. So again, we're gonna help him cure and we're gonna just put, put two pins crisscross applesauce is what I call it, crisscrossed like that. And it's gonna cure straight. And that bend is gonna be gone. So let's do one more step and see what we can do about spreading the wings. I've not spread wings in a box before on a damselfly, so let's see what happens. Oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. There we go. So nicely spread out wings, not exactly the way they would look in nature though, which is the challenge. And I do want the bud box to be close to nature. Let's leave him the way he is maybe and let's try it on the next one. I'm going to um, pin him head down the way we did here and head down here and see if the wings will look different. So we'll grab this guy. Another beautiful damselfly. Blue on the tail. Double zero pin. And now I'm gonna be careful not to pin the wings. The wings are right here on him. I don't know if this is a him or her. And we're gonna pin it down. I am going to need to secure the tail because the tail is probably going to move when I spread the wings. Let's see. A little stubborn. And there we go. That's all right. We're going to pin one side and then we'll go to the other. That's one, and we'll redo this side now, too. And I'm gonna grab that tail and put it back where I want it, which is here. And now we can fidget with the wings. And 
This is a little bit more to how we see them in flight. And that's the idea is in the bug box. I like showing them in the variety of ways we see them in nature. And again, that tail is just giving us a little bit of a hard time. There we go. And I just want the tail to stay in that position there. And now we have two beautiful Dobson flies. And when I'm looking down on them, this one is gonna look a little bit more natural. This one's wings will be slightly, not quite as lifted. They're beautiful. Now the tail markings, this has a gray and white pattern, and this has a blue, if you can see that, a little bit blue and black pattern. It's the two species that we found here at the property we're at. There's a green one floating around sometimes. All right, let's do one more. Let's see the Ichimimion wasp. I don't even know how to say it. I have to look it up. Okay, check this guy out. Look at him. Beautiful. So it's a type of thin-waisted wasp because it has a thin waist. It is a wasp. Look at the long feelers on the top, the antenna. And then this orange part curling under here is the abdomen and there is a oviposter sticking out. Let's show you that. See that very teeny, 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 tiny here at the end stick pin sticking out? So the Ichimimon wasp, what they do is they lay their eggs in wood, uh, rotted wood, branches, in the grass, uh, in the ground, and they literally run that pin into the ground and then the eggs flow along it. And that's how they plant their babies. And then once the wasp pins the babies, plants the baby um, eggs, they die. So she's probably at the end of her life cycle. And again, we're gonna attempt a double zero on this and I hope I don't ruin her with a double zero pin. I think it'll be fine. I'm just looking where the, let me get in another position here. Thorax is right here. There we go, barely on. And then I'm gonna take my tweezers, hold her straight, and encourage the pin through. Oh, holding on. See the angle we got it on there? Okay. And we have a Ichimion, Ichimimon, Ichimimion wasp. Can't say it, but I know what it is, right? Now I've been leveling out on the dragonfly doing our crisscross X pin because we want the tail straight. But the Ichimimion, that's how you would find it in nature with that bent abdomen. So I'm gonna leave it exactly like that. I'm not gonna to touch the wings. I'm not gonna to touch anything. I want it to cure exactly where it is on the pin. And what happens over time is the insects literally freeze onto this pin exactly in this position. There is some gut left in their insides. They were caught yesterday. They were only frozen. And as that deteriorates, it causes a glue action, I think. And that's why they don't fall off these pins when we're done. And so I promised you I'd position the spider. And I'm gonna be honest, I hate spiders on the pins because they never cooperate when I try to move the legs around. And his legs are glued. Damn. Let's see if we could get it off here. That one back one is fine. You can't see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna hold this part up and just 
yank them a little. No, nope. he is glued. These little curls, under curls, are glued on. Yeah, he's stuck. We'll do it on the next one. I like to spread their legs out a little bit, like on this one. Spread his legs out a little bit. These are spiders. You can't tell because their legs are curled up tight. Their legs are curled up tight. You can't tell that there are spiders here. Can't tell that's a spider, but this one you can, even from the side. So just spreading those legs out a little bit gives it some more detail and more character. I don't know what the striped one's on. That red one is a common um, uh, wood louse, I think, something spider. I gotta look it up, I don't remember my spiders. They're arachnid, the arachnid family. So we're gonna take this pin out and just put him back in the group. Okay, all right, I know you're not bored yet, so let's pin a spider. We didn't do a spider, did we? Let's pin a spider. This, I think, is a type of jumping spider. Cute little guy. And before I pin them, we're gonna spread the legs out a little bit. Let's turn him and spread the legs out a little bit. Flip, flip, there we go. Now he's upside down. So the other thing I could do is I like to open the legs a little, get in here on each side. Oops, and spread them out a little bit. And what I could do is just leave the legs open, let it cure a little bit, and then pin him. I've tried that method too. There we go. One, two, how many legs on a spider? Eight, I hope you said. So the legs are open, and then I just lay a pin on it and pin them open like that. Do you see that? And now we're gonna do the other side. <laughs> and take the legs, spread them open. See, he's stubborn. Stubborn, stubborn, stubborn. Which is fine. His job is to be stubborn and my job is to help maneuver that. There we go. One, two. And another pin for three, four, but there's only three. Now, why would there be three legs on a spider on one side? I have a little story to share. Sometimes the spiders, to get away from whatever the predator is, in this case, he was dying on the ground when I found him, they will let go of their legs. I found that they will break off their leg to escape. There it is. And let's get that fourth, third leg out. There we go. So I'm gonna try a new method here. I'm gonna just leave his legs open and then pin him in a little while after he's cured. There we go, there we go. And let's see what that does. those legs open. Okay, it takes a few minutes to get them in the right position. Why do I spend this kind of time on it? Because I want the bug box to really look great. I'm not going to do thousands of bugs, just a couple. And um, I like them to be beautifully displayed. There he is. All right, this one can come out. His legs are in that open position. He's upside down right now, not face up. That's the other thing we can do is actually, I've done this method, so that's one way. Here's another way. 
is flipping them over, spreading the legs out. They stay in position because they're on the styrofoam. They're not going anywhere. Pin him. Top of the pin, but I'm gonna slide him back down. Yay. And now I'm gonna spread his legs out. And what encourages him to stay in position is the legs are getting stuck on the styrofoam. And then later I can just encourage him up the pin. And again, yep, three legs as suspected on this side, only three legs, the other side four.